everyone. Welcome back to another Council Recap. How are you doing this week, Matt? I'm doing pretty well, Sammy. How are you? I'm doing good as well. Enjoying the summer weather right before it ends. Yeah, it's been nice. So let's jump right into the recap this week. One of the first items was Council approved the Radio Assurance Upgrade Program. So could you go more into details about that program? Yeah, this was um, just an update that the Public Works Department is swapping out the um, kind of heavy duty emergency response radio systems that police and fire use. They're, they're um, very durable, they're, they're on their own network. And so they're, um, you know, we've been told that, that they really are a much better alternative for emergency response um, to cell phones. And this was just a, an update on um, an 11, believe it or not, $11.5 million multi-year, I think it's a seven or eight year time horizon for swapping out the old and increasingly obsolete radios for new radios. And so this is the kind of, um, you know, capital expense or, or, you know, investment in equipment that city staff need to be successful in their jobs. And we just approved that one, but it was a large price tag. So we wanted to highlight it for folks. I also asked a couple of questions about the old radios and I was really hoping that we could secure those radios for, CERT or AVPSN or any of our other uh, local citizen emergency response related organizations that could benefit from, from that great equipment. City staff's perspective at this point is that the um, radios are really valuable for their spare parts and that they repair radios pretty frequently and the parts are expensive and difficult to get. The radios also have pretty high resale value, even when they've kind of lost their full utility for um, city, city uses. And so they were hesitant to commit to giving, to donating them to local groups, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working on them. I think that it's, a, it's gonna be a slow process. There's a multi-year turnover in that inventory. And so we'll see if we can get some of those radios for our local citizen um, emergency response groups. Council also unanimous, unanimously approved a proposal to reopen negotiations on a purification, a water purification project. So could you go more into details about how you came to that decision? Yeah, so this one, thanks for the question. This one's been um, sort of dragged along for a while now. And I, you know, for whatever reason, the Valley Water and the city are struggling to get on the same page about expanding water purification. So essentially, from Valley Water's perspective, they have a responsibility to ensure that we have adequate water supply from whatever sources, all, you know, kind of all of the above strategy, pumping groundwater, importing water from the Delta, purifying and recycling water, all, all these different sources of clean water that, that we use for both potable and non-potable uses. The city has the facility out at the wastewater treatment plant for recycling and purifying water. Purification is very complicated, it's extremely expensive, and we're trying to get to a place where Valley Water and the city can agree on terms to expanding that facility. Valley Water would like to purchase more of our purified water, which would require the city to expand the facility to purify many more gallons per day but there's a disagreement over the economics. And we just wanna make sure, of course, our responsibility on the city side is to ensure that our residents and our taxpayers are not put at any kind of financial or other disadvantage by signing an agreement to expand water purification, just given how expensive and complicated that kind of system is. I think it's the right direction. We know we're gonna to need to recycle more water and purify more water and conserve more water. We can't simply just magically create more of it out there in the way that you sort of can by in you know in, on the energy side with things like solar panels and and wind turbines uh, it's a little harder with how finite water is but um this is really just about a negotiation and trying to get to some sort of agreement that works for both the water district and the city so that's the update we agreed to continue to negotiate into the new year our staff has drawn a line on how many hours per week they'll invest in those negotiations, but we'll keep you all posted. This is just sort of a status update and a confirmation that we're gonna, we're gonna keep going forward and trying to find a solution. Thanks for that update, Matt. Uh, yeah. Council also approved another development from Boston Properties. So could you elaborate on that proposal? Yeah, and this was probably the, the lengthiest item last night, which um, is a, a large uh, commercial development downtown near the Guadalupe River at Almaden Road and Waz Way. 
and it's been a surface parking lot for a very long time. The, the contentious piece of this project, and I'll admit that I have some concerns and I asked question, quite a few questions last night about this and I, I feel better, I supported the project. I mean, in general, I should say, this is exactly the kind of project we want, right? We wanna see urban infill, we wanna see dense development in our core, near transit. It's a building that will add, bring a lot of jobs, both really good high paying jobs to build the building, but also then to fill the building once it's built for whichever companies end up leasing space there. And so much better use of land than a very large surface parking lot in our downtown core. And it will be built to be LEED certified. It's a beautiful building. There's, there's a, it will increase our tax base and generate more uh, tax dollars that the city can use for other services. So overall, it's a great project. There's just one problem, which is that it's being built on a, on a very narrow, oddly shaped site that is right up against the river where there's been a parking lot that comes very close to the bank of the river. And it really, you know, it was built a long time ago when we did not have the same level of protections for our local creeks. And we know that um, we've added those protections, these setbacks from our waterways to better protect them and to have less erosion, less flooding. And so um, technically, based on everything I'm aware of and, and what you know the city attorneys have told us and, and what uh, council decided on last night, the, the, the project can go forward essentially on the same footprint that the parking lot was on. It's gonna move back a little, so they're not gonna be quite as close to the creek as the current parking lot, but it's still very close. It's closer than the minimum 35 foot setback from the uh, creek that, or the, the riparian corridor as it's called, that we would typically have. And that's not great. And I, I did hear from a number of uh, residents who had real concerns about that. And I don't wanna see us building right up to the edge of the creek. Um, I certainly, and this was the focus of my comments last night, I don't want to see that creek become even more of a concrete river, as you see down in places like LA. We want to continue to have a natural river with, with um, the ability to have water flow naturally and create habitat for, for plants and animals. And um, I, I don't want to see us have to make the creek more of a concrete uh, aqueduct uh, because we're doing development too close to it. So I asked a lot of questions about soil erosion and flood risk and, um, and you know, I wasn't the only one. There was a, the, some of my colleagues asked similar questions and the city feels pretty confident that the placement of the building, the depth is gonna have minimal impact on the, the trees that are there, on the, on the habitat, which is already a pretty degraded habitat. They, did, they do not believe that there will be a need to reinforce the channel with concrete sides. So I think we'll be able to continue to have the river flow more or less as it does. They made some arguments for why overall the project does a lot to advance climate smart. It reduces average commute times. It's a very energy efficient building and they are gonna be doing some basically local habitat restoration off site in other parts of the river. So overall the, the developers gone to great lengths to try to make this a win-win, but um, that's why it was a lot. It was a big item just because we had to talk a lot about the, the state of the river. And frankly, we've neglected that river. It's been sort of abused and underutilized. And we've got a lot of people camping down there and lighting fires and leaving trash. And the public doesn't really benefit from much of our uh, waterways. And I think that's really unfortunate. And so there's, there's a lot more we need to do on that issue. It's kind of beyond the scope of this one development, but um, I voted for it and it's moving forward. And um, I'm excited to see our downtown attracting investment and, and transforming before our eyes. So I think that's really a overall positive step forward. Well, thank you for all of those important updates, Matt, and for recapping the city council meeting again this week. Yeah, you bet. And anybody who made it this, this far into the video, if you've got questions or comments or there was another item on the agenda you wish we had covered, please just leave your comments down below and we'll do our best to make these updates useful to you in the future. Have a great, uh, have a great rest of the day, Sammy, and see everybody next week. Bye, everyone. Take care.